Okay, so uh, James Trophy, my uh, love my pups, mybreedersupply.com. Check us out. Go buy some of our products. You'll love them. Find out about our stud service. It's excellent. Um, subscribe to us. We'd appreciate it. it. Makes us want to do more of these videos. All right, so we're doing a five-part series on progesterone level and how it relates to getting dogs pregnant. So we did an overview. We talked about the breeding ses process in the previous video. Now we're going to talk about the pregnancy. The pregnancy is the area basically between when we bred the dog and when the dog is going to whelp. So this whole section here, this is the pregnancy. And how long does that last for? Well, it's typically about 70 days from when you first saw first signs of blood till the puppies are here. Uh, about 60 days, actually 61 days from AI, because you're AI about a day 11, before puppies arrive. So what happens? What do we expect? What are the signs that our dog is pregnant? Well, so the, the things that you're going to see to start off with is a dog that becomes more tired, sleeps more, might be off its food, might be vomiting a little bit, definitely changes in the way the dog behaves. And that's in this kind of general area, I a black pen here, in this kind of area from when you do the AI for the next few weeks, you can get this kind of morning sickness going on. So we're going to call that morning sickness. Same thing in humans. So not feeling quite right, doing a lot of sleeping, not eating very well, maybe throwing food up, quite normal, nothing to concern about. Blood, bloody discharge. Yes, that does happen. But that is one of those things that you absolutely want to be a, pay attention to, especially in this first few weeks. And what we want to make sure is we do not want to see a temperature that is greater than 101.5. That would infer there's something going on. And one of the things we have to worry about is to whether we have a UTI, uterine infection, or a vaginal infection, or a... Um, 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 actually a urinary infection, which is the bladder, a vaginal infection, which is the, basically the whole tunnel that goes up to where the uterus is, or a uterine infection. And of those, the one that really you've got to watch out for is a uterine infection, and specifically a thing called pyometria. Pyometria is basically a situation where there's an infection inside the uterus, there's pus inside the uterus, and because the uterus is a closed bag with a small opening that's typically sealed, doesn't have any way of escaping, and a dog that has pyometria can absolutely get in some serious trouble. How do you treat pyometria? Antibiotics. How do you treat a really severe case of pyometria that's, that the dog is, is at death's door? You do, a C, you do a spay to remove the whole uterus, and that's the end of that dog ever having puppies. But just because you've got a bit of a discharge, don't go into a panic, take the dog's temperature. The first thing is, does this dog have a temperature? If this dog has a temperature and, and it's also lazing around and not doing very much, then I mean it's definitely time to go to your vet and have them do an examination and probably get antibiotics on board for that dog. All right. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. It doesn't happen often, 10% of the time, 5% of the time. Those you can have some kind of an infection going on that needs to be treated. All right, then we go into this whole area here where she's basically starting to grow puppies inside her. So we've got this whole section in here that what's going on? Well, the first thing is a dog that's never had any puppies before, a good sign that the, the dog's in fact pregnant is the nipples start to get bigger and swell and get larger. That's a good sign that a dog is in fact pregnant. Um, obviously a dog that starts to get fatter and is obviously getting bigger, obviously a sign we've got puppies on board. When can you do your first test to find out whether or not you do have a pregnant dog? About day 30. So about day 30 is the point that you can either do a blood test, a relaxing test. You pull some blood, spin it, put some plasma onto a little cartridge, and in about five minutes later you get a result. I sell those tests, by the way. They're on our website, mybritishsupply.com. Easy to do. I think it's $79 for five tests, and they've got a two-year shelf life. So this is a simple way. that You can do this at home, or you can go to the vet and have a relaxing test done. The next one is to have an ultrasound done. And an ultrasound at day 30 should show whether a dog is pregnant. But I have had many times where ultrasounds have not been reliable. And it's always a false negative where they say the dog is not pregnant, but in fact the dog is pregnant. And you don't find that out until later on. All right. So what do I do? Well, I never do an ultrasound 
because I do an, I do a relaxing test because they're so inexpensive and easy to do. Uh, and then the, the last thing that I always do, if I'm getting up to this a couple of days away from my potential due date, and I'm not sure that this dog is pregnant, I'll do an x-ray right here, I'll do an x-ray. And then I can absolutely find out, because the situation you can get into is that you have a dog that has a single puppy in it, and you can't see it, there's no outward signs of it, and you think the dog's not pregnant, lo and behold it is, next thing you know, that puppy is trying to be born in the middle of the night, when you're completely unprepared for it, the puppy gets stuck and you end up with a bad result. So definitely, if you don't think your dog is pregnant, go get an x-ray done and just make sure that you haven't in fact missed the single puppy that's in there. So what goes on in this whole section here in the middle? Well, this is a question about keeping your girl happy. Getting, we don't want a skinny dog. She might start losing her appetite, especially the back end of this. You may have to start feeding her different foods. Quite common that she'll refuse food. Uh, very common that to be hand feeding the dog will help her have her appetite. Feed her something interesting, you know, boiled chicken and rice. Good quality diet, absolutely. Um, I recommend that you're also at this point doing two other things. Um, we don't want a skinny dog, so we want her to look a little plump, if anything. We don't want her going into labor with not having any meat on her bones, because remember, she might have five, eight, ten puppies that she's got a nurse to provide milk for. And that's going to come from somewhere. I mean, basically it comes from, you know, she's got to take that off her own body. We want to give her some extra reserve so that she has a good chance of getting through this without looking like she's uh, been starved. But I, I would give a good multivitamin. And multi, mult, multivitamin, oh dear, vitamin. Give a good quality vitamin, vet, pet tabs, what we use. And then... Get something that has folic acid in it. Get some folic acid. You can get that in tablets. You can get it in a liquid dropper form. But this is something we recommend for humans, and it's to do with development of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the embryo. So folic acid is a good thing to have on board. You know, there's some ideas that it stops things like cleft palates. Now, it's one of those things we really don't know, but it's completely safe. Give some folic acid. Um, what are some things that can happen in here? Well, you can see some jelly-like substance coming out of your dog's vulva. That scares people, but it's not anything to worry about. That is what's called the mucus plug. Quite normal to see that. And typically you'll see the mucus plug falling out of a back end something about a week to a few days prior to whelp. And it's a jelly-like clear substance, really thick, and you'll just see it kind of oozing out of there, and you'll think something terrible is happening. This is basically, or well, this is, a plug that forms in the, set, in the entrance to the, to, the, to the uterine horns where the cervix is and it stops any bacteria and other stuff getting up in there. As she starts to dilate, the little jelly plug falls out and you see it on the ground, you see it outside, you see it on a bedding, quite normal, no panic involved here at all. Okay, what's the next thing that you can see happening? Well, blood. So you may see some blood discharge and that is of some concern. Especially if you see a lot of blood, with big chunks in it, then you have to be worried that it's abortive, that you've just lost your pregnancy or lost part of your pregnancy. If you see a little bit of blood, then I don't get too worried about this, but in both of those cases, first thing I do is take the dog's temperature, make sure the temperature is less than 101.5. That's always, always something that you should always do anytime that you're worried that your dog has a problem. Take his temperature, it needs to be less than 101.5. If you're seeing some blood spots, Put that dog on bed rest. Put her in a crate for 24 hours. Don't let her jump up on stuff. When you take her outside, put her on a leash. Don't let her chase cars and other dogs. Keep her calm. Exactly the same thing we do with humans. The whole idea here is, is you've got a little bit of a tear going on where the connection to the puppy through the placental, uh, through the umbilical cord to the placenta has got a little tear on it. And we want to make sure that that doesn't develop into a big gushing leak that then you lose the puppy. So let that thing clot up. 24 hours, 48 hours, bed rest, keep her calm. If you see green discharge, this is a lot more concern. That normally is a fairly critical situation. And you typically don't see that until you're in the last few days, the last week of a pregnancy. And we'll talk about that more when we start talking about the whelp here in a little bit. Um, okay, so what do we got here? We are talking about looking after your dog during this middle section, make sure your dog's happy, it's being fed properly getting some exercise, but not over energetic exercise. Got some multivins on board, got some folic acid on board, 
and you're just playing a waiting game. All right, next video, that one's out the way. The next video is a very important one. So pay attention to the next one, because this is the one that after people have got everything right, they screw it up. And it's not just you doing it, it's your vet doing it too. Very, very important video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to us. Bye, everybody.